I totally sympathize, sympathize with Dr. Soon. It's very hard. You want to cram so much information in, and the PowerPoints are going to be online. Uh, again, for the full bios, those you can look in page 13 and 14. Those listening online, you can go to the site under About. It says the speakers, and you can read the full bios. And uh, our next speaker, uh, do I change this uh, or someone else does? How do we get to the next? You're going to do it, right? Okay. Uh, it's going to be Dr. Fred Singer, which many of you here know and love, and he's an atmospheric and space physicist, founder and president of Science uh, uh, and Environmental Policy Project, and one of the most, world's most respected and widely published experts on climate, and published over 200 technical papers in the peer-reviewed scientific literature, paper, books, etc. And without further ado, Dr. Singer. Uh, thank you, Stan. I'm going to tell you this morning how to win a debate with uh, the alarmists, the people who are gore acolytes. I call them gornicks. <laughs> if you're from uh, Switzerland or Tyrol, you'll know that this means uh, nothings. It's the word for nothing. So I, I try to call them that, the gornicks. So the gornicks, uh, you ask them, First of all, an important thing to establish is that the burden of proof in this business of uh, uh, anthropogenic global warming, the burden of proof must be on the people who want to show that they, it does exist and is important. Because they're the ones who are recommending action, mitigation. So you ask them, okay, uh, what's the most important piece of evidence in your opinion, supporting anthropogenic global warming. If they're not very sophisticated, they'll say, oh, well, glaciers are melting. And you say, okay, glaciers are melting. But what temperature does that mean? Now, of course, it can't, you can't tell what the temperature is from a melting glacier. And furthermore, uh, you can't tell what's causing the melting. There's no way of distinguishing human influences from natural ones. If they're a little more sophisticated, they'll say, oh, sea levels are rising. And then you tell them, well, they've been rising for 18,000 years, steadily, never dropping, always rising. And that's because most of the ice from the Ice Age has been melting. So finally, you hit the sophisticated ones who will say to you, well, the piece of evidence that supports AGW is the IPCC report. <laughs> That's a joke. If you look at the IPCC report, they will point to page 10. And on page 10, you will find this, what's called the Summary for Policymakers, SPM. <coughs> anyway, it's the top one. It, they say, mostly observed increase in global average temperatures since mid-20th century is very likely, and that means more than 90% sure, due to observed anthropogenic increase in global in greenhouse gas concentrations. And then you say, okay, that's a nice summary. Where is the evidence? Well, finally, you get to page 684 in the report near the end of the report, and you will find one graph and discussion which claims to be the evidence for this important statement in the summary. So let's get this straight. Here's the summary that claims they have the evidence for AGW, but then you have to go to the report, and finally you find one graph and one discussion which pertains to this. And here's the graph. It's an important graph. You need to look at it carefully. What does it tell you? The heavy black line you see on top is the reported global average surface temperature. Please remember that. Global average surface temperature. The blue stuff you see there is calculations from greenhouse models. And the first thing you notice, if you're careful, is the amazing 
and astounding agreement between the models and the observations up to about 1970. And you say, how can this be? Because in the same IC IPCC report, you find statements to the fact that the forcing applied to the models is either unknown or of low probability, or they don't know how much it is, and that it pertains mainly to clouds and aerosols. And then you notice, if you have studied the matter, that they ignore completely any forcing from the sun, that is, from solar activity changes. So they ignore the most important forcings. They also ignore uh, oscillations, like the uh, Pacific Decadal Oscillations. That's not in the models. But somehow, the models agree with the observations up to about 1970. And then from 1970 onward, you see that the models disagree with the observations. There's a gap that gets bigger and bigger all the time. And now, they say, OK, this gap shows the effect of human influences because the models have not included greenhouse gases. So I forgot to mention that. These are models that are so-called unforced. That is, they don't include greenhouse gases. And then they say, well, the only way to explain this gap between the models and uh, the reported uh, observations is by sticking in a greenhouse effect. That's where the greenhouse effect comes in. That's the evidence. And you notice that it's a pretty big gap. And from this, they derive the climate sensitivity, which is very large in this case. Notice that, they, that the, what they fill in there, the greenhouse effect, is just big enough to explain the gap. It doesn't come from first principles. OK. The first thing you know, three things to notice. The first thing to notice is this amazing agreement between the models and the observations up to 1970. That's a complete exercise in curve fitting. In other words, you pick the right parameters. There are many, many parameters that you choose in these models. And if you choose the right parameters, you can fit any curve, any curve. In fact, if you look at the bottom, there's this famous statement from uh, uh, John von Neumann, the famous mathematician, who says, give me four adjustable parameters, and I can fit an elephant. Yeah. Give me one more, and I can make his trunk wiggle. <laughs> uh, it's, it, it, is, it is nonsense. The next thing you see is this refers to the global average temperature. Notice that they cannot fit northern hemisphere and southern hemisphere separately using the same adjustable parameters. And the final thing you notice is that this refers to the surface temperature. They cannot fit the ocean temperature. They cannot fit the atmospheric temperature, and they cannot fit proxy temperatures. And that's what I'd like to show you. So let's go on. These are the three problems. And this is the problem with curve fitting. And now, I'll show you, first of all, the atmospheric temperatures between the same, between 1979 and the 1998 El Nino that you see there. And as far as you can tell, the trend there is pretty close to zero. In fact, it is zero, within a margin of error. In other words, the atmosphere in the tropics is not warming. They can't fit that. The models don't explain. The models all predict a strong warming. How about the ocean data? Ocean temperatures? Very difficult problem. I plot here the Hadley results of nighttime marine air temperature, which is the air temperature measured just above the ocean. And you will see that there's very little warming between 1970 and 1990. In fact, uh, 
even by 2000, the temperatures are roughly about the same as they were around 1940. And the final thing I want to show you are proxy data. Now, proxy data are non-temperature data, that is, uh, uh, sorry, non-thermometer data, uh, temperatures measured or deduced from uh, various types of geological measurements that do not involve actual thermometers. But they can be used to check the thermometer data. And they don't check. Here it is. These are tree ring data, the best tree ring data I could find. In fact, this is from a publication I did uh, about uh, 15 years ago. It shows the rapid rise that you see between 1850 and uh, the present, which comes from, uh, oops, uh, which, which, which comes from the recovery from the Little Ice Age. And you see no temperature increase after 1940. No temperature increase after 1940. And I've researched the matter now and found many, many more proxy data, which I'll show you here. This is a selection of four that do not show any warming after 1940. Look at the one on the upper left. Maximum temperatures in 1940, and then they decrease. Iceberg Lake, temperature decreases after 1960. Uh, Southern California Plateau, um, temperatures around 1980, about the same as they were in 1970, uh, and no, no upward trend. Mongolia, no really any upward trend. So I conclude that the global average surface temperatures, which the IPCC uses, the black curve, is very much in doubt, and it should be closer to the blue, and that the anthropogenic contribution, therefore, according to IPCC, must be very close to zero. They haven't made their case, and I think you can tell them that when you do your discussion, your debate with the Gornicks. Their claim for AGW is based on flimsy evidence, selected observations, and curve fitting of the models. No independent evidence from ocean, atmosphere, or proxies for the surface warming trend, which they use in the IPCC report to support evidence for anthropogenic global warming, and we conclude that the current warming is mostly natural, and that the human contribution is minor, not zero, but very minor and un completely unimportant. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Singer. And 